Hello, I'm Pastor David Shub. I welcome you to our weekly devotions at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. We are always happy to welcome you all to these special times together. Today we start with a reading from the Gospel of Luke, the eighth chapter. It says there, as Jesus went, the crowds pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years, and though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his clothing, and immediately her hemorrhaging stopped. Then Jesus asked, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and press in on you. But Jesus said, someone touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people, why she had touched him, and how she had been immediately healed. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Sometimes our suffering makes us despair. Will things ever get better? And what will it mean for things to get better? Sometimes we just don't know. Twelve years this woman in our story had been hemorrhaging. Twelve years she was considered unclean within the temple confines. She was avoided by people. She was isolated and pushed to the edge of society. She had sought out healers in every possible approach. And yet she considered to, continued to suffer. Finally, her suffering drove her to a desperate act. She wanted to touch Jesus. Maybe, maybe just touching this man would bring healing. And then, in a moment, she was healed. New life. But in the end, this is not magic. We can sometimes get into that kind of feeling. It was an act of faith. And in that faith, she found life. Why is it that we wait so long to reach out and find what we need to heal us? Why do we have so much trouble believing that God is there if we but reach out in touch? One minister in a sermon told this story. When I was in seminary, I spent a summer working as a chaplain in a Roman Catholic hospital. On one occasion, I visited a man hospitalized after cancer surgery and learned that his wife was being treated on another floor with heart arrhythmias. When I entered her room bearing reassuring news about her husband, some friends from the couple's church were with her singing hymns. I joined them for a hymn, and then we held hands and pray. And when I left, a nurse at the station outside the woman's room flagged me down. What did you do in there? She asked. The woman had been on a heart monitor, and while I was there... Her irregular heartbeat had calmed to normal rhythms. The nurse had been watching the readout at her desk and was astounded by what she saw. Personally, I was amused and a bit chagrined that someone working in a religious institution was surprised that prayer could make a difference. But all too often, such are the ways of modern medicine. Today's readings invite us to place our trust in God, to expect liberation and healing. And when they happen, and we are restored to freedom and health, to minister to others with grateful hearts. In his reflection on cancer, John Robert McFarland tells this story. It's a story that reminds us that healing often takes a different form than the one we might expect. He writes, love, which is the presence of God, is what makes a miracle. Miracle occurs wherever the attitude of triumph, the attitude of love appears, and not any actual event of victory. Miracle is not about living or dying, but about getting whole. A Roman Catholic priest, Marv Modit, tells this story of his cancer. I first heard it 20 years ago. I understood it now in a way that I couldn't then, because at this point, McFarland is struggling with his own cancer. He goes on, he began to feel weak and went into the hospital for tests. There he first heard that word. The test showed he had cancer, the incurable kind. He said, I walked out with no anger, no discouragement. It seemed that a great calmness came over me. The hospital said there was nothing that they could do for him. 
No treatment, but that when he got bad enough, they could send him to Houston, where he could be put into an experimental program. He accepted the diagnosis and waited to get worse. His weakness continued. He could no longer do his regular work. However, he was able to say mass occasionally for a group of cloistered nuns, those who never leave the convent at all but spend all their time in prayer. One of the nuns there, Sister Catherine, told him that she would spend full time praying for him until he was well. He just smiled. It was a nice gesture. Finally, the cancer had advanced to the point where he could go to the experimental program in Houston. He looked forward to it. By being a guinea pig, he might at least help the researchers learn something. Something that would help other patients. They ran him through all their tests, and then the head researcher called him in. Father, why are you here? He asked. Why? Because I got cancer. And they told me that when I got bad enough, the researcher cut him off with a wave of his test papers. You don't have cancer. Father, anywhere. We've run every test in the world on you, and you have no cancer at all. The priest walked out of another hospital on another street with the same feeling of calmness that he had felt before. The same calm, calmness both upon hearing he had cancer and upon hearing it left as mysteriously as it had arrived. It was then, he said, that I realized that in the calendar of saints, it was St. Catherine Day. McFarland goes on by writing, that's a miracle story, but in several ways. I am impressed more by the miracle of healing than the miracle of the cure. Please don't misunderstand me. I love cures. I want to be cured. I want to be cured. I want you to be cured. The final cure, though, is death. Each of us will die someday of something. The miracle I see in this story is that calmness of spirit and diagnose and weakness and cure and strength, that same awareness of the presence of God, of the presence of love. Now that I have cancer, I believe in miracles. Are you hurting and afraid? Has your suffering reached the point of despair? Then hear these words. You are not alone. Reach out. Reach out not with expectation that Jesus will do what you want, but reach out in faith that Jesus is there. You will find that in trusting Jesus, you will indeed find healing. Jesus understands your pain and need and is always there. Let us pray. The truth is, Lord, that we all need to be healed at some level. Save us in all the ways we need saving most. Amen. May you find the healing presence of Christ as you reach out in need this week and always. Have a good week.